Hey guys, Ivan here and we are doing the comparison, Sergio Oliva vs Patrick Moore. These two guys are very similar in height, in age, in muscularity, in overall accomplishments, in bodybuilding, and as I promised to you yesterday, I am a little bit late with that promise so I apologize, but uh, you probably know that these guys had a little bit of a argument on social media, in case you missed it, let me show it to you once again, short version. Patrick got top 10, if you add the four people that were missing, yeah. they got the same place that I did at the Olympia, which yeah. is last. There is no way in hell any of the people that placed top 10 at the Olympia, you know, not the first call out, obviously, are going to beat me. There's no way to being beat by someone who got ninth or 10 is just, it's just bullshit. It's not going to happen. It's All the would have, could have, what should have been, if who was there, what would have, blah, blah, blah. Man, just bring him on the stage. That's all that matters. All the sideways talk, talking about where you're going to place, who can't stand next to who, based on whatever, shape, all that nonsense, who can't do this. Just make sure you bring it on show day, man. All right, so putting this argument aside, this is still a great comparison because these guys, again, are similar in height and in weight, and they are about the same age. Believe it or not, these guys are both around 35. They both look like they're 25, but they are around 35. And as far as their accomplishments at the Mr. Olympia, as Sergio says, Sergio was 15th, which was the last place. But Patrick was 10th, so Patrick cracked the top 10, and whatever, I mean, it doesn't matter who was there, who wasn't, he was ready, he was there, and he deservedly uh, took that uh, spot in the top 10. Some bodybuilders didn't even show up, some were off, you can argue back and forth, but it doesn't really matter, what matters in the end is the result, and it doesn't really matter that much what happened at these two Mr. Olympias, 2018 and 2019, what matters the most is what outcome is going to be at the Arnold in about a week. But if you guys are too anxious, just like myself, and, and, and don't want to wait that one week and you want to see what will happen right now, I'm going to do a video. If you don't care about it, just wait for another week. But right here, we're going to compare the versions from the Mr. Olympia. 2018 and 2019 Mr. Olympia versions of these two guys. We're going to compare them and basically make a prediction what's going to happen at the Arnold. Of course, both of them made some serious gains in the meantime, especially Sergio. It seems like Sergio basically transformed himself. He seems to little bit too full these days considering the fact that he's competing very soon so maybe he's not gonna be in great conditioning but uh, Patrick he didn't really have a lot of time you know from Mr. Olympia 2019 until now to grow anything but I'm sure he's gonna bring very good conditioning if it if it is the way it was at the Mr. Olympia that's gonna be really good and if Sergio doesn't come much improved I think he's going to lose against Patrick but that's not gonna be the case Sergio is bringing his best shape ever but what I also find interesting, very interesting in this comparison is that Sergio's strengths are Patrick's weaknesses and vice versa. For example, Sergio's weakness is his waist. It's not super tiny like Patrick. Patrick has super tiny waist. But what Patrick doesn't have is great legs, which is the, the best body part of Sergio, right? So it's gonna be an interesting comparison and let's just cut to the chase. I'll just shut up and start this comparison finally. So we're gonna start with the front double bicep pose. If you go bottom up, you will definitely notice that Sergio has better legs. But then you come to his waist, and because of his waist, that is not super tiny, his legs don't even look that dominant, right? I mean, look at the, 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 the ratio of his squad to the waist. It's not as good as Patrick's, even though Patrick's squads are not very good. And then you come upstairs and you can notice that his biceps are not very peaky, his triceps are not popping, nowhere near as Patrick's. Maybe he's bigger when he stands next to him. I'm not sure about the height ratio of these two guys. I'm not exactly sure. I'm guessing it's somewhere like this. And uh, Sergio has a lot of mass, but he doesn't create the best illusion because of uh, his joints and his uh, overall bone structure. Patrick's bone structure is just much better and he absolutely destroys him in this pose. So we come to the back double bicep. If you go bottom up, now you can notice that Sergio is a little bit thicker downstairs, he has more mass on his hamstrings, probably more detail, more conditioning, as far as glutes, they are both very conditioned, it's all good downstairs, they are both very good in their lower bodies, but when you come to the upper body, you start with the lower back and you can see that Patrick's lower back is just much thicker, the spinal erectors, the lower lats, Sergio has a little bit high lat insertions and also his upper back is not very thick. You can also see that his bicep peaks are not as good as Patrick's. It's not that much 
of a dominance on Patrick's side because Sergio does this pose very properly. He bends his spine a lot, he leans backwards, which makes his arms and shoulders look even bigger and more dominant, and which creates a better V taper overall. And you know, it's good, it's good. It reminds me of Phil Heath, you know, that kind of uh, style of hitting the pose, but those high lats and uh, the, the lack of back thickness just throws me away, and that's why I give this pose to Patrick as well. The next pose is front lat spread, and you can see here that Sergio has much better quads, much, much better, but waist, waist once again, sure, his separations are deeper, he has harder muscle, more developed muscle, definitely better quads, but, you know, waist to quad ratio, not as good as Patrick's. Upstairs, Sergio may be even a little bit more muscular, but again, compared to his neck, compared to his wrists, and so on, doesn't flow that well, and the waist is basically the center of, of the physique, and it sets everything else, it sets everything else, it's all based on waist, it sets the pace for the rest of your physique, it's not about how big your arms are, it's how big your arms are compared to the rest of your body parts, like waist, like your wrists, like your neck, like your chest, other muscle, and so on, so it's about proportions, maybe when he stands next to him, it's gonna be a little bit different story, but then again, I give this pose to Patrick as well, because of his perfect structure, basically. You gotta admit that Patrick has nearly perfect bone structure. As far as his shape of the muscle, it's not exactly perfect, but it's very good. Now we come to the side chest, as you can see, and you can take, you can take a look at the chest first, and you can see that Patrick has thicker chest. Bigger arms as well, arm to shoulder ratio. Uh, as far as quads, in this pose from the side, it's pretty close. It's just, again, head to arm and to, sh and to chest ratio, overall ratios, I mean, bone, bone structure, again, that's the reason why this pose looks more dominant than Patrick. Bone structure, again, this pose is very good for Sergio, so you could go either way, I guess, it's very close, but I give it to Patrick, again, I have to, it just looks better, chest, chest looks thicker, arms look better, everything else, it reminds me of Flex Wheeler, in a sense, Patrick, because of those small joints. So now we come to the side tricep, which is basically Patrick's signature pose. Really, really good side tricep. It's the best side tricep at a Mr. Olympia by far, 2019. I just love this physique. I mean, I just loved it in this pose, especially. Look at the chest, the separation, the arms, the waist, the tiny, tiny waist. And just compared his waist to Sergio's waist. And then again, also you need to compare uh, the ratio, the length of the torso compared to the length, of, the length of the legs, lower body. That's also a very important factor that you need to consider, uh, the proportions of their bone structure. So Patrick's legs are very long and his torso is short, which makes his physique so much greater. Uh, Sergio, not very good at this pose, probably his worst pose, somehow he, he cannot flex his abs, it looks like he has some fat in his lower belly, it's not fat, it's definitely water, but doesn't look proper, um, again, everything else, just not perfect bone structure, not perfect proportions, I give this one to Patrick, no doubt. Back lat spread, uh, this one is absolutely in the bag for Patrick, it's just a night and day difference. Look at the spinal erectors and the lower back as far as the lats and the traps and everything. I mean, the thickness of the glutes in this pose, just overall flow. Patrick absolutely annihilates him. Let's not even discuss this any further. Finally, we come to the most muscular and every single pose up to this point was won by Patrick. Absent eyes, I couldn't find the proper photo of Sergio hitting it, but trust me, it's horrible. Patrick will destroy him in that one. Here you can see it's close, it's close, and uh, just because Patrick won the comparison, I will give this one to Sergio, you can go either way with this one, it just depends on what you prefer, because of the quads, I will give it to Sergio, because in this pose he can hide his waist, you cannot see how big his waist is compared to the quads, and you can see that his chest is pretty thick, his arms are pretty big, and the quads are just much better than those of Patrick, but it's very close, you could go either way, you could go with Patrick, I'm sure this is not exactly perfect ratio, I'm sure Patrick looks bigger when he actually stands, ne stands next to him, so you could go either way, I'll just give it to, to, to Sergio, so you can say he won one pose, but it's very close, overall, overall conclusion, basically, 
let's just pray for Sergio that he made big improvements. Because if he shows up the way he was in 2018, it's not gonna be good for him against Patrick. No, no, it's gonna be horrible for him. In my prediction video, I gave him 11th place. And that's pretty generous, if he comes the same, but based on everything we saw so far, he really seems improved, he seems much bigger. So if he comes much bigger, and if Patrick comes the same, I still think Patrick is going to beat him, but it's not gonna be much different. I think these guys are gonna be battling it, I think it's gonna be an interesting comparison. I would love to see a call-out of just two of them, that would be really amazing, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Hopefully they will be they will, they will be standing one next to another in one of the call-outs. We'll see, we'll see what happens. It's only like a week and two days before the Iron Classic, so, you know, just wait for a little, we're gonna see what happens. But basically, based on this, what I can say is, if you talk about winning the Iron Classic, Sergio has absolutely no chance whatsoever. Patrick, very, very small chances, but there is a possibility, a slight possibility for him to actually end up victorious if these guys don't come in shape and he comes absolutely peeled, which is most likely not gonna be the case. William Bonnick is always in shape, even when he is off, just like Sergio said in this interview, he's still very good. I don't see that happening, but based on this right here, Sergio versus Patrick, who's going to place higher, I definitely do have Patrick. Sergio can only beat him if he made tremendous improvements, like 30% better than the last time, only then. But that's a little bit unrealistic. Whatever you guys think, let me know down below in the comment section. Like the video if you enjoyed it and please subscribe for more Bodybuilding videos like this and stay tuned because I'm gonna post a lot of Arnold Classic content when it comes, just in a couple of days, a week or so. Once again, thank you so much guys, all the best and bye bye.